Um, give me one moment here. Just click it on everything. Awesome. So I'm a teacher at Mamie's High School. I didn't add that in there. It's in Park Ridge, Illinois, near O'Hare Airport. Um, I, ha I teach at a high school, at a suburban high school, about 2,000 students with 72 different nationalities, and half of them are on free and reduced lunch programs. So um, I have a large population of ELL and ESL students in some of my classes. Um, throughout my 29 years of teaching, I've taught many 25 years of AP and honors chemistry with the last five being just the regular level. So Edulastic has been really great for me and that um, I'm able to provide differentiation. So as Chris was showing you, like, you know, how you could do the drag and drop um, question types, you know, I might scaffold that for some students that are stronger and give them the fill in the blank ones, you know, without the words to drag. But um, I'm here to talk to you about today about some really nifty things that I do um, with in chemistry, um, using drawing response questions, unit conversions, um, most importantly, sharing, uh, formatting subscripts and superscripts. Um, a question came along in the Facebook group about a month ago, and I'm like, hey, I have that answer. I figured it out, um, and I'll be sharing that with you. Um, and embedding simulations like the FET simulations. Um, and then, and what I love most importantly is that you can add uh, blank data tables below it um, for students to input the data from the simulation. <clears throat> and if if you as a teacher have performed the simulation yourself and collected the data, you could input it so it would mark the kids right or wrong. And I love that. And, and then underneath that, if you have the kids, if you need to have them graph, they could all graph and everything's all in one place. Because before this, what we used to do before a Jelastic OMG, you had to like have all these attachments on Google Classroom or a links on Google Doc and then what would happen if you clicked on a link or an attachment, it would take the kids to another tab and they wouldn't know what to do next. So with Edge Elastic, we're able to provide instructions and also we're able to, everything's all one-stop shop. And it's been amazing. Um, I really, um, I um, heard about Edge Elastic, but really ran with it when school closed and due to COVID in March. And every day I learned something new and awesome about using Edge Elastic for my classes. So here we go. So drawing the, um, so, so the, doing a drawing response question when I first started wasn't really intuitive. Um, I'm just going to play this little video. There's no audio, so you can see while I talk. You find it under the type of question called highlight, and then you click on drawing response. And see, there you can see me type in, I just write the word question. But then you click where it says um, you can drag and drop, and you can open up your drive then to find your video I'm sorry, your image that um, you want to draw your kids to draw on. So like, for example, early in the year, I had a Bohr model and I taught the kids, you know, actually I make a video that's similar um, if they don't pay attention while I'm teaching them online, that they can watch the video again within the question if they need help. So I insert little instructional videos also to help the kids know how to use the tools because some of the tools aren't intuitive to some of the kids and so this is where you can just add skills, depth of knowledge um, to your questions. And here I demonstrate how to use the tool. So like that's the drawing tool and I teach and there's, you could insert text, math equations. There's a ruler. I teach the kids how to change the color and the font size so they can just drop the dots onto their Bohr model. So they're not just scribbling them in. And so that's been really amazing. So that's an example of one drawing response question I do. You could do many others. Oh, sorry about that. I'm just going to go back to the next slide here. Da, da, da. All right. And now um, this is an example of some student work for the drawing response and a closer view of what the menu um, bar looks like. The selector tool, you'll always have to click on it first. And, um, and this is a text box if they want to label drawings. And I just wanted to show you some of the um, uh, student examples. Um, and then if you want to add grading criteria, that's a possibility, especially if you're collaborating with colleagues and, and giving the same assessments, then you can like grade, um, be on the same page when you're grading uh, an item question. Okay. Um, and some other things you do with Edge Elastic, it's a math type question, is unit conversions. And there's many different ways to do it. Um, it's definitely under math. Um, an easy way, I put another way in here, um, is just when you click on it, and you'll see it on my next screen. Um, if you haven't used the math expression formulas as a science teacher, they are great if you have to format subscripts, superscripts, do unit conversions. So I have some more slides here about that. 
Um, they pertain to both subscripts, superscripts, and conversions. So I'm not going to play this video right now because um, it's about six minutes long. So they will be sharing the video with you, um, if I mean the slides with you, so that you could go back and see step by step how that works. But I just want to show you when you use that math question type, you got a pull down menu, and there's basic, intermediate, or full. So you choose full to get the subscripts or superscripts, and you would click on either one of those icons. So oh, I didn't want to click. I sorry. And you can play that for your own convenience with some popcorn. Here, if you don't want to play the video, I give step-by-step -step instructions how to insert subscripts and superscripts. Now, this is both for this, not just the teacher, but it's also for the student. So I do have to teach my students how to use the tools. So sometimes I'll just give them like practice, like a warm-up question and be there to guide them so they know how to type it in correctly. Of course, if they don't type it in correctly, I can override the auto graded question um, and fill in the points if they don't make it a subscript. So I do that. So I'm not going to read you all those directions. Just want to show you they're there for you. Um, here it is again, but here's a little GIF of me actually doing it. Wanted to show you can move that little keypad around. It looks like a little calculator, but there's many different uh, formatting tools there for math, and you can move that around on your screen if it's in the way. So that's a GIF of me doing the subscripts in um, that question type. Um, oops, let me go to the next and see if there's anything. And then it shows you that expected answer. Let me just make sure. Okay, next one. All right, and this is my favorite favorite. Um, it's about inserting audio. Sorry, there's no audio. Inserting simulations, okay? So um, again, a video for you to play. I have some screenshots on the next slide that I'm gonna talk about. So it's about a six minute video that shows you me embedding a pet simulation. And these are available on YouTube too. If you wanna look me up, Tina Sabatello and follow me. I post a lot of stuff for Chem and also tech tools as well. Um, I add a data table and the graph for kids to graph in the first quadrant. And then you could do things like scaffold. You can, you can give them a cookbook directions with the recipe, with the directions for the simulation, or say, hey, you know, we're investigating the relationship between the concentration of a solution and how much light it absorbs. Here, use the simulation, use these set of concentrations of solutions and make a claim and support your claim with evidence. And there you have your claims evidence reasoning you could do as well. Um, so it's on my next slide. Let's go play the video. I don't want the video right now. Hold on, sorry. Click. There we go. So basically the steps are create a new item. So that's a new question. I chose fill in the blank type question. Then I choose text entry. And I just click in the box, the menu, this is their menu bar. And you'll see when you click on the little media icon, which is a video icon, that you click on the embed code and you just paste the um, URL or the embed code. So this is the link, the hyperlink where you can attach, uh, include the videos that Chris had included in his. Um, and of course the cloud is uploaded from Drive, but there's the embed code. And these are the steps. Not only do you can insert your data table, you could format the data table, and then if it's a fill in, uh, if you chose to fill in the blank, you just drag the text input to the spaces in your data table. And then there's an area below for you to enter all the correct answers that, for the data that you collected that you expect your students to get. Okay. And then, oh, so mine looked longer than it was, but you could play back the videos um, at your leisure um, when they share the slides with you. And feel free to reach out to ask me any questions. There's a lot here. I have a lot more of, I presented a lot of stuff on Edulastic for different organizations. So if you need anything, you could also reach out and ask me. Thanks guys.